Hello, beautiful, bright family. It's Demi from Bright Girl Health here, and today I'm going to do the highly requested follow up to my video I did about why we get leg pain, back pain, even period poops on our period. So today is going to be ways that you can reduce leg pain, back pain, period poops, and even migraines and headaches during your period. If you haven't watched the first video about why we get leg pain, etc., on our period, you can watch that. I'll link it down below. There are also a few posts on my Instagram expanding on why we get these kinds of pains. Now, just a short recap for you guys. When we are on our period, around that time, our body releases something called prostaglandins. And prostaglandins are actually really helpful because they help our uterus to contract so the blood can exit our body. Here's the thing though, we have different kinds of prostaglandins that our body makes. And to simplify it, let's think of them as inflammatory types and anti-inflammatory types. Now the anti-inflammatory types are helpful, but the inflammatory types are the ones that are going to cause us that inflammation and then as a result, pain. So leg pain, back pain, period pain, and even migraines. So we want to be looking at reducing our inflammatory type of prostaglandins and increasing uh, the good type, the type that is helpful and that actually helps our body to deal with our period. So factors like our hormone balance and our diet and lifestyle can impact the balance between these type of prostaglandins. And one thing I particularly want to focus on today and the tip I want to give you is to look at your omega-3 and omega-6 fat intake in today. Fat intake. Don't know why I said that weird. So we have different kinds of fats and I want to look at omega-3 fats and omega-6 fats. Now they get turned into prostaglandins by the body. So if we can look at reducing our omega-6 fats and increasing our omega-3 fats, then we can fight this battle against period pain and hopefully decrease a lot of that inflammation and pain. Now you may have heard that we're supposed to eat a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-6 fats to omega-3 fats, meaning that we eat equal amounts of omega-6 and omega-3 fats. You may also have heard that we don't do that. <laughs> Our modern diets aren't really conducive with that recommendation. So a lot of sources will say that we're eating a 15 to one ratio. So 15 parts um, omega-6 to one part omega-3 or 16 or 20 to one. Um, different sources will say different things. The point is we're eating far too much omega-6 fats to omega-3 fats. If you're following a typical Western diet that's highly processed with a lot of fatty foods, a lot of fried foods. So some omega-6 fats that we can try to avoid is fried food, food that has canola oil in it, sunflower oil, vegetable oil, all of those things can be turned into the pro-inflammatory or the inflammatory types of prostaglandins that cause us pain. Eating a lot of animal fats can also lead to this as well and particularly increase our inflammation. So let's talk about omega-3. Omega-3 fats are so good for our period and so good for minimizing inflammation and creating those anti-inflammatory prostaglandins that are actually going to be good for us, help us and reduce that period pain. So think things like linseeds or flax seeds, fatty fish, even things like seeds and nuts, so walnuts, hemp seeds, even chia seeds, pumpkin seeds and pumpkin seed oils, and even something a lot of people don't think of are our dark leafy green vegetables. They actually have omega-3 in them as well. That can be really, really helpful. Evening primrose oil is another kind of oil that is said to help uh, prevent the creation of inflammatory prostaglandins in our body. So have a look at your diet, have a look at what omega-6 foods you might be eating and then what omega-3 foods you might be eating. Address that ratio. If you focus on cutting out junk food, packaged food, fried food, fast foods, you are going to be dramatically decreasing your omega-6 um, consumption 
anyway and then you can have a look at how you might be able to sneak some hemp seeds or chia seeds into a smoothie eat some walnuts as a snack and things like that to increase your omega-3 intake if you are working with a women's health practitioner and they want to address your omega-3 uh, intake, they could maybe provide a supplement or really look at your diet. Another reason for pain that I mentioned in my original video was lower levels or decreased levels of magnesium. Now, magnesium, when it's decreased, can lead to more muscle soreness. So a couple things you can do to increase your magnesium would be to take a magnesium supplement or a topical magnesium spray. I just ran upstairs to get my moon box. I hope this is not backwards. <laughs> my moon box magnesium spray. So I use this every single day and particularly during my periods, I'll spray it on my tummy, I'll spray it on my upper thighs, on my legs. And I even use this after my workouts when I'm expecting to have a bit of muscle soreness, I'll spray this on. And this helps to relax your muscles, helps them to relax from when they're contracting and uh, helps to prevent that pain that you might have. So if you wanted to get the Moonbox Magnesium Spray as part of the Moonbox program, which is a three month subscription box with products that help you to get rid of period pain and PMS naturally with no medications, no pill. Um, I have a code brightgirlhealth, which will get you 10% off and a free drinkable elixir valued at $27. I went through the program myself and I absolutely loved it. I don't get any period pain. I don't I get very minimal PMS and I am so passionate about treating period symptoms naturally and in that way we get so much more in tune with our body. Um, as part of the Moonbox program, you also get access to a couple of different ebooks that will teach you more about omega-3 and omega-6 fats and other types of nutrition that will impact the way that your hormones work, impact the way your body produces and clears hormones to then have hormone balance, to then have a better period. So highly recommend the program. If you wanted to check it out, I will leave the link below. And the code that I had was bright girl health for 10% off. So the last cause that I mentioned in the previous video about what causes leg pain and back pain, etc., is a shift in our hormones and particularly when progesterone drops just before our period starts. Now progesterone is supposed to drop just before our period and that helps to signal our period to actually happen. But if we have an imbalance between progesterone and estrogen, one of our two main hormones that influence our period. And if you wanted to learn more about them, you can grab my book, The Bright Girl Guide. You can use the code BRIGHT10 for 10% off and that will teach you all about what progesterone and estrogen do in the body and how they help to support each other, but how when they become imbalanced, it's not necessarily a good thing. And it's really important to understand the roles of these hormones. Here's the book and it teaches you so much about periods and hormones, but there's a few specific pages that tell you what hormones control our period and then their specific role. And when you understand your hormones better, you can better support them to be balanced. So you have the best period possible. So what we can do is try and boost our progesterone naturally to make sure that it's not too low in comparison to estrogen. So if we have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone in comparison, we call that estrogen dominance. And estrogen dominance can cause so many period problems, not just our leg pain, back, back pain, period pain, headaches and migraines. What we can do to boost progesterone naturally can be to look at things like vitamin C, our B vitamins even. Another thing that can really rob our body of progesterone is stress. When we are stressed, our body takes the resources that it would usually use to make progesterone and uses them to make our stress hormones. So if we're stressed, we're never gonna have optimal progesterone levels. So looking at exercise, getting in some movement every day, but not too intense, because that can be a form of stress on the body as well. Another thing can be including deep breathing and meditation in every single day. 
really prioritize your mental health and your stress management. Now, another thing that can have an impact is coffee um, and even alcohol as well. So you can look at your consumption there. Um, and then what we can also do is look at trying to bring high levels of estrogen down because we want this nice balance between estrogen and progesterone. So even if we have good levels of progesterone, but our estrogen is way up here, then we need to bring estrogen down. And you might want to go to your doctor and get a hormone test so you know exactly what you're doing to balance your hormones, whether it's trying to bring progesterone up, estrogen down, look at your cortisol, look at your um, androgen levels. Uh, but if we want to look at bringing estrogen down, we might look at things like decreasing our external estrogen exposure. So we might change our body products, our hygiene products, our cleaning products to toxin-free products because a lot of typical conventional products like deodorants, face wash, body wash, cleaning products all have endocrine disrupting chemicals in them and that means hormone disrupting chemicals. Something else we can do is not be heating our food in plastic, be using glass or metal water bottles that will help to decrease our external estrogen exposure as well. We can be drinking filtered water and then another way to make sure that we don't have too much estrogen is to encourage the body to clear it or get rid of it more efficiently. So looking at things like your gut health, helping your body to remove the estrogen so that it doesn't get reabsorbed into our body through our gut and then cause an imbalance. So lots of fiber, you can look at a good probiotic, eating lots of fermented food and really support your gut and your digestion. Fiber comes from things like fruits, vegetables, not seeds. So what I always say, one of my mottos in life is having multiple vegetables in every single meal. And you can make that fun and delicious, but make sure that your plate is looking really nice and colorful. We can add things like flax seeds to our diet that will help with estrogen clearance. Another thing that will help support our liver to detoxify estrogen is eating things like cruciferous vegetables, so broccoli, cauliflower, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts as well. And then another thing we can do is, again, like I said before, just make sure you keep moving and keep exercising. It doesn't need to be super intense, but get your body moving and that will also promote hormone balance as well. And when we do these things consistently over the days, weeks, months, we can see results and we can see improvements in the amount of period pain that we get and the amount of leg pain and back pain. But we need to be consistent and we need to keep at it. This isn't a quick fix, it isn't a magic pill and that's the beautiful thing about it because it's about us supporting our body and its natural ability to either heal or to have healthy balanced hormones and we can give it that love and support to get to that place where we don't have any period pain or we can decrease it by a lot. So good luck, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram if you have any questions and I will see you in my next video. My book, The Brico Guide, is officially available. It is all about you understanding your menstrual cycle and your hormones.